address it with the entire team. And, you know, I had a good friend of mine over in Greenwood Village who's a high-standing um, citizen here in Denver area, and he had the same thing happen to him. He laxed on paying a traffic citation, and the next thing you know, he was uh, went through the same thing that Bradley went through. And um, Bradley's a high-standing individual just like that guy is, and it's over and done with. There's, uh, he, it depends on how he feels when he gets out here. He'll either be limited or DNP. Is it bothering him more than it was a week ago? <clears throat> a little bit, yeah. It's just been slow to come around. Especially since it's week one, how much do you weigh trying to get him out there, but also making sure he's not pushing it too far early in the season? I weigh that every, every each and every week, you know, unless it's the last game of the season. But um, we'll do the best thing for him and the team. I thought he kept getting better in that he got more comfortable in what we're doing schematically uh, and with the techniques that Mike's coaching. Um, you know, he's a guy that's played for a lot of different offensive line coaches over the years, so he's good at adjusting, but there's still an adjusting period that he has to go through, and I thought he got through that well. There's been a sense of urgency when we talk to players about being out to a fast start in general. Being out to a fast start in first drives and first quarters was a problem last year. How, do you, how does the team address that? Is it something you talk to them about? Like, we cannot be where we were in very long time? Yeah, we have to coach better and play better right from the get go. Is that game planning, do you think? Because those are usually scripted, aren't they? Especially yeah, offensively, those script a lot of their plays. Yeah. You guys were uh, top in the league in red zone defense the last few years, but the Giants have been really good in that area, too. What do you see from them? They're tough. You know, they're hard to run on down there. They got a big front, they're physical. Um, you know, and they have a multitude of coverages that they'll play down there, both man and zone, and they do a good job with it. What are you seeing from Daniel Jones, his growth? Yeah, I think he's been growing throughout his career there. Um, he ha obviously has a lot of talent, has a good arm, uh, very athletic, fast when he pulls it down and runs. Um, you know, he's a dual threat quarterback in that he can throw from the pocket, throw well, and he's got athleticism. Yeah, just just good play, you know, and he, which he's capable of, and he's shown in the camp so far, shown in the, his 20 snaps or so that he had in the last preseason game, that he's just flying, and he has shown no um, effects of his injury, so I mean that's not 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 in question, and um, just playing good both against the run and the pass. You know, his play against the run is going to be critical. Not very much so. Malik's been the uh, beneficiary here of the misfortunes we've had at that position the first two years and played a lot of football for us. So he'll be ready to go. How do you handle that spot in terms of splitting the reps between Malik and Jonathan Cooper if Bradley's not able to go? Yeah, we'll manage it. Um, you know, a lot of that de is determined by how long the drives are that you're out there for. So if they have some long drives on us, they will be managed throughout that. And then Vaughn will still have to be managed too. Um, just him and let me check. There might be one other one. Yeah, he's the only one. Pretty much every quarterback, whether it's Brady, anybody going to a new system, it's a, it's a learning curve even throughout the season. How much does Teddy have for Sunday at the line to, to, to change and do? And obviously, that'll probably go over the year. Yeah, he's got a good amount, and you're right. I mean, it, it was no accident that the. Uh, Buccaneers played their best football the last two months of the season. There, there's a correlation to the point you're making. and But I feel good with where he's at. He's had familiarity with the system, you know, coming from Minnesota, and Pat was there. So there's there was a jump start in that regard. A lot of the stuff we're doing, you know, he was exposed to in his other stops. So I feel, I feel good in that way. I don't feel like he's come here cold turkey. Nick, do you have goals that you set beyond wins for a defensive number of sacks? Yeah, the takeaway being the one, you know, we definitely like to get 
uh, two or three a game. And um, that's the only, you know, the sacks don't really have a number four because a lot of times you can be getting good pressure and affecting the quarterback, but you're not getting the sacks. Coach, do you have any comment about the Sam Farmer article about the quarterbacks taking their traces off before the New Orleans game last year? No, that's, to me, that's ancient history. We dealt with that back when it happened, said my piece then, and we've moved on. Yeah, that was part of it. Um, and Mac, you know, didn't play any football last year. Came from a um, lower level. What his exposure to the type of stuff you do in the NFL was limited. He just needed some time. The, uh, the jersey number changes on defense. I don't think so. I mean, they're not going to be able to change them on a week to week basis. So, uh, yeah, I think it's much to do about nothing. All right, see you.